We are in a print farm. So this print farm, it's in this school called Spark Academy, right? Yep. I see it on your shirt there. What is Spark Academy? Spark Academy is a public charter school for high school age uh, individuals, ninth through 12th grade. And we exist currently inside Manchester Community College so that we can take advantage of having a streamlined manufacturing track so that students can graduate with an associate's degree as well as their high school diploma. Oh, that's really, okay. So in, in they enter essentially high school Yep. and their learning track follows them through college. Yep. How has that been? Has that been pretty receptive? It's been pretty good, actually. The students that get behind it love working with their hands. They love having programming as part of their ability to take a class. They love the idea of what skills you can learn by doing Print Farm that also translate into the business world outside of Print Farm. So it's been pretty beneficial for them. That's cool. And it looks like you stood this up in a room that was, well, I, I heard this was an, was it the principal's room before? It was the director's office. The director's office. And when this opportunity came uh, about, we didn't have extra space. So he said, I don't need an office. This is more important. Let's make this happen. <laughs> so that's the type of guy we have running it. Whatever it takes to make the opportunities happen for the kids, we make it happen. That is so awesome. Okay, so let's take it through the beginning here. The director moved out of his office and now there's this room. So you guys set up racks and you went with, it looks like P1P 3D printers, right? Yep, we had a, uh, a conversation about trying to get some of our students experience by doing print farming over at DECA, but because of the other projects they have over there, you have to be 18 or older in order to get in. So mm -hmm. access was a problem. So the director said, just give me the supplies, we'll make it happen here. And then he gave up his office to do it. And now the kids can get that exposure and get those experiences and also have a connection with DECA and Dean Kamen. That's really cool. And I, I love that you're doing this. You're not gatekeeping this. You're, you're allowing them to learn this technology and, and learn about farming and actually manufacturing in general to, to be able to, I don't know, get a better job in the future, right? Yeah, it's a little bit of small business management. There is obviously the printing world because a lot of stuff that the kids didn't know is it's more than just plastics now. You can print, print with concrete and metal and just about anything now. So it opens up the opportunities for them to explore, hey, if I have any interest in this whatsoever, let me check that out. So it's really just trying to give them new pathways to explore and then see what they come up with. Oh, cool. Well, I mean, in this room, obviously, the former director's office, you're not printing in concrete. You're right. printing in, it looks like PLA material from Matter Hackers. Yes. And, if, and you're doing the XRP project, right? The XRP project was a grant that was brought about from the, the former governor, Sununu, and DECA and WPI. They wanted to collaborate and make sure that robots and the idea for programming robots could be something accessible to students at any middle school, high school, all the way through New Hampshire, even if they didn't have the funding to support that kind of stuff, if people didn't have the experience to teach it. We just needed a way to get them those kits for free and then give them a very easy QR code so they can learn how to program themselves and then the kids could do it all over New Hampshire. Oh, okay. So at, at 3D Printing Nerd, we have a print farm and we are printing the XRP kits commercially for SparkFun. You're doing it though to, you're acting as a, as a manufacturing hub for, for schools around you so that you can get them robots to then get the, the kids there using the robots. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to learn about about a day on the print farm here, because like I said, we okay. run a print farm. I'm very familiar with the very long days that get put in there. I'm pretty tired. For here, kids have school life. Yeah. Uh, just at the start, how do you and the students manage that for essentially a manufacturing facility? We have to break it up throughout the day. So we have four blocks throughout the day, and then students will take a block as a shift. And so whatever your shift is throughout the day, it'll be dependent on what the day needs. So block one is shift one to start everything up again. So it's a lot of data collection, restart the computers. There's some quality control for how the printers uh, were performing, how the print came out, and if adjustments need to be made. And then they pass on that information to block two, and then it keeps going throughout the day. So that as it goes, there's a checklist of performances and competencies that the students can practice. And at the end of the day, 
somebody closes up shop and then we start again the next day, but it really is a small business that they're running. How did you guys go about setting up the files for printing on these Bamboo Lab P1P machine? We're using the default profiles that were given to us as far as what needed to be printed in order to put the kits together. Okay. And for us, it's mostly just the chassis, the battery cover, and then a couple other things like the wheels and the arms and stuff like that to make it work as a robot. But the default programs were very cut and dry. You plug and play, you're good to go. But we did have the option if we needed to or somebody had a better design that they wanted to do to build off of this current platform, they could make some adjustments and do some other prints. We just haven't got to that point yet because mm. we're trying to fulfill the 5,000 order first. And then it's playtime. We can see what we can do with these. Have some fun. On the farm here, it looks like you have a number of machines. How many is there? We got 24 printers. Yep. 24 of these Bamboo Lab P1P 3D printers. Yes. Like you said, they're running in shifts. Yep. I do see some that say no SD. What's yep. going on there? We just recently had uh, seven different printers pop up with error codes that said there's an issue either reading the file or the SD card is physically damaged. And so to have seven at one time, was a little weird. We're all now learning how to use data usage. So we've been collecting data on a daily basis so that we can, for moments like this, go back and figure out what was the cause of the current issue. And if we can't figure it out, we call in the big guns and trying to figure out who else knows more about this and how can the students learn. So they get to play detective. And right now that one's a, a mystery we haven't quite solved really? yet. Really? Yeah. Okay. Do year one students learn something different on the farm versus year two, year three? We split up the print farm into three different levels. So if you're print farm one, it's basically just the intro. You might have no experience with 3D printing or even know that it exists or been around the printers at all. So it's just a nice little easy walkthrough. This is what that world looks like. And here's how you can maintain it and do some stuff on a daily basis. If you get to print farm two, you're starting to look behind the curtain and get into the whole supervisory management of it where you get more of the small business management. If you do your project planning, you do your supervisory, you do your data usage, your printer maintenance, you get into the minutia yeah. of how to keep it going. Okay. And if you get to the point where you're in Print Farm 3, then we're talking into business management, the finances become part of it, you start to do some business to customer relationships and you work closer with the director. So there's an opportunity to grow everywhere from intro all the way up to getting ready to be into that world professionally. Have there been people in the world professionally that have seen what you're doing and are excited to have student, those students enter the workforce? Yeah, I mean, DECA has been hugely supportive, WPI. I mean, part of this relationship with the XRP grant also helped do something with MCC where they have a nice uh, relationship with WPI, where if you have a 3.3 GPA and you finish up your your associate's degree, you're in for WPI. Like, well, have some kids learned about this and, and maybe got a printer or two at home and started their own small business? Actually, not seen that yet. We've seen a lot of the kids that say like, oh, this is great, I have a printer at home. And then they walk into it and they start teaching us some stuff, <laughs> which is a, a nice, wonderful, humbling experience. How do you do, fellow kids? But then they, they get more involved in it and they can see that there is a pathway outside of just playing with a printer at home and realizing like, oh, I could do something with this. I could pursue this as a career pathway. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Where, where do you see this program going in the next five years? It would be nice if we could help other schools replicate this so that you can have more accessibility for a greater amount of students, right? Mm. It's never been, hey, this is our thing. We only want to do it for ourselves. We want to share this with as many people as possible. But as far as what we want to do with it right now, currently it's an extended learning opportunity. They're called ELOs. And for this, it's very flexible for what do you want to take this experience and then use it to then bridge a gap to something else based on skill sets and competencies. So okay. it could be anything. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love looking to the future like that. One more question for you though. Sure. Um, have any parents of students come to find out more about this? Yeah, we've had a lot of parents that even when we come and do a tour for a parent and their child for prospectively being a student the next year here, they get to hear and the eyes pop and they go, this is crazy. This is yours or is this, is it the college's? And then we tell them, no, it's ours. And then we show them other toys that we have and they go, this is a high school? They're like, yes. <laughs> the students get excited, the parents get excited, they start talking to each other about it. And then it becomes one of the, the highlights when we have other events where 
somebody will say like, that's cool and all like, we love what you're doing for, you know, game night or it's movie night. Can we see the print farm? And then we come <laughs> up and we give a quick tour. <laughs> Adam, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. You're gonna look in the camera and you're gonna tell everybody where they can go to find out more about this incredible print farm and what you're doing here at Spark Academy. If you want some more information about Spark Academy or the print farm opportunities that we have here, please visit us at sparkacademynh.org. And the person you really want to ask who has all the answers, his name is Director John Tuttle. That's the guy. Was that his office? It was. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thanks for watching. Um, I really appreciate you joining us on this journey. Uh, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and print farm all the things. Right? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And as always, high five. No one? Love it. Oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs>